Hi YouTubers, I'm glad you're all here. Thank you very much for joining me. Well, the railway workers have rejected the latest contract offer, a deal that was brokered by President Joe Biden, citing stringent management rules on taking time off for emergencies, raising fears of an imminent strike that could cripple an already disrupted supply chain. Railroaders are discouraged and upset with working conditions and compensation and hold their employer in low regard, said Tony Codwell, president of the Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way Employees Division. In an October 10th statement after members voted 6,646, uh, 5,100 against ratification of the ten tentative national agreement reached with Class 1 freight railroads. They resent the fact that management holds no regards for their quality of life, illustrated by their stubborn reluctance to provide a higher quality of paid time off, especially for sickness. Evidently, they've been forced to work even with the, if they got COVID. They can't even take time off if a family member dies. And they are on call seven days a week, which means they can't plan for a doctor's visit, a dentist's visit, um, yeah, or even taking their family for medical checkups because they're on call 24-7. The result of the vote indicates that there has been or is a lot of work to do to establish goodwill and improve the morale that has been broken by the railroad executives and Wall Street hedge fund managers. BMWED is the third largest railroad union in the country. Here's a map of their rail system. Nearly 12,000 BMWED members submitted ballots for the latest vote. The top two largest freight unions representing over 55,000 engineers and conductors are currently conducting their voting through mail. Even if members from the other unions vote in favor of the deal, they are likely not to report to work, considering the rejection from BMWED. They'll, what they'll do is they'll have a lockout, and all the other uh, railways will honor the lockout. A strike would debilitate U.S. supply chains while also disrupting passenger services just before the critical Christmas and Thanksgiving holiday season. Both sides have agreed to renegotiate and work is scheduled to continue as normal until at least November 19th, five days after Congress reconvenes. The deal brokered by the Biden administration contained a 20% pay raise, annual bonuses of $1,000, and health care benefits. Biden had said that the rail system is the backbone of our supply chain. Everything from clean water to food to gas, liquefied natural ga gas, everything seems to be on a rail getting delivered to where it needs to go. The tentative deal was reached on September 15th followed, following a 20-hour marathon of negotiations which involved U.S. Labor Secretary Mark Marty Walsh and the president. Workers were supposed to gain an average payment of $11,000 if the deal was ratified, along with annual cash bonuses of $1,000. Here's a map. I don't know how up to date it is for the national rail systems. Um, purple is CSXT. Um, UP is the blue. BNSF is the yellow, and you can read it all here. Um, I don't know if it shows Amtrak. Difficult work conditions due to staff shortages while they laid off about 30% of the rail workers, which means, you know, you got all these less people picking up the slack of the 30% that were laid off. Here's a map for the Union Pacific Railway. Difficult conditions, work conditions due to Staff shortages are the main reason for the agreement falling through. Staff are often required to report seven days a week and report to work on short notice, which means they can't make plans. 
So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you very much for your support. Yeah, you know who you are. Thank you. Uh, please share, like, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.